In this video, we're going to talk about adding joystick control to our tank drive and control our drive base with an Xbox controller. So the first thing that I want to do is show you um, a controller interfacing with the driver station. Then we're going to talk about a way to control the tank drive with our controller, so one specific control scheme. And then we're going to write uh, code to model that control scheme. So the first thing I want to do, like I said, is open up driver station and head over to our USB menu. And you'll see here I've got an Xbox One controller plugged in, highlighted in green. And over here you can see all the different controller axes, all the different possible buttons, and a map of the D-pad. We can also set rumble in code. So I'm just going to hit a few buttons. You can see some of the buttons lighting up. I'm hitting A, B, X, Y. And these buttons um, correspond to an ID. So A would be 1, B was 2, X is 3, Y is 4, etc. So that's how the buttons are laid out. And you can figure out what ID they are pretty easily just by tapping on a button and figuring it out. So if I wanted to hit one of these top right buttons, that's the ID. If I want to hit a bumper, that's the ID, etc. We also have all our axes. So remember, there are um, the joysticks themselves on the Xbox controller. And then we've also got the triggers. So triggers are binded to an axis too. And of course, for um, our purposes, we're only concerned with the joysticks. And so you'll notice we've got the left x-axis, so meaning that means the left joystick moving in the x direction. So moving it to the left, moving it to the right. We have left joystick with the y-axis. That's the second one right here. So that's the left joystick, moving it up, moving it down. And then we also have our right joystick at the bottom here. x-axis, once again, that's right, left. And then y-axis for the right joystick, up, down. And the cool thing that you can see, actually, is that or that you will see and that we will use eventually rather is that each um uh, joystick value or the range of joystick values is actually from negative one to one just like our percent output so if i hover over this real quick you'll see that if i go forward on my left joystick we're, we have a value of negative 0 0.9 if i go back on it we've got 0 0.76 and if i go on my right joystick if i go up on it it's producing a positive value. If I go down, it's producing another positive value, rather. Or if I, sorry, if I go up, we're getting closer, closer to the, I guess I'm hovering over the negative there. If I'm going up, I'm getting closer to negative one. I'm going down, getting closer to one. Now, some controllers might configure their axes differently, so you won't actually see, you might not actually see the same range of values as you move up and down on your joystick, and that's totally fine. But again, it's important to double check as we'll talk about shortly, we might need to negate some values. So let's talk about a control scheme that we can use to actually drive this tank drive. So the most basic one and the one that we're going to write today involves using just the Y axis on our left joystick and our right joystick. So the left joystick will control the left side, and the left set of motors on our drivetrain. And the right side, as you guessed it, will control the right side of our drivetrain. And we're only enabling forward and backward functionality. And if you intuitively think about it, if you go forward on both sticks, the robot's going to go forward. If you go backwards on both sticks, the robot's going to go backward. If you go forward on the left one, and you go backward on the right one, the robot's going to rotate clockwise. If you go backward on the left one, you go forward on the right one, the robot's going to rotate counterclockwise. So that's usually a control scheme that people that some people tend to use. There's also another one that we're going to talk about in the future, but for now we're going to be worried about this one. So let's head over to code. Now for this um, uh, specific uh, control scheme, what I want to do is just get rid of this first because we're going to have to rewrite that. And we also don't need our inversions anymore because remember we're controlling each side independently, so it actually does not matter what um, what side is inverted. So we can actually just get rid of this. And what we'll probably end up doing is just assigning a negative for now. That inversion will be important for another control scheme that we'll talk about in the future. But for now, we're just going to get rid of it and just stick to controlling each side independently. OK, so the first thing that we need to do is make our joystick object. What we're going to do is private, it's called joystick. And we'll call it, uh, let's call it Xbox controller. I'm going to say equals new joystick. And it's going to ask you for a port on your joystick. Now you can easily access that port by heading over to driver station, going to your USB menu, and seeing that this number right here, 
in this case, our port is zero. And another thing you will need to do is you'll notice, oh, it's red. We didn't do anything wrong. We just need to import the joystick library from WPI load. That's it. I'm just gonna add this import statement right over here. Okay, so we've got our joystick. Now we need to get our um, axis values. So remember, the left side of the joystick will be controlling the left percent output, and the right side of the joystick will be controlling the right percent output. So what we're going to do is just make some doubles, and I'm just going to call this left percent out, and we're going to say we're going to do Xbox controller dot get raw axis. Remember, because the, the joystick itself is an axis, and it needs the number that corresponds to the axis. We can easily figure that out by going over here. So we see axes right here. And we can see our left y-axis is 1. There we go. And now we're going to do the same thing, but for right percent out. And we can set that equal to Xbox controller. That get raw axis. And now we can look for our raw axis values. And for the right joystick, it's 5. So now that we have our percent outputs, all we need to do is say left motor primary, or sorry, left side primary rather. Dot set control mode dot percent output, and our percent output value is just going to be left percent out, and that's the value that we get from our um, Xbox controller. And then we can also say right side primary. Dot set control mode dot percent output. And right percent. Did we miss something? What's going on? Did I spell something wrong? Well, let's try again. That's it. Percent output. Right percent out. I just that's complaining. Did something go wrong? Let's see. Okay, let's try that again. Let's just try it. You know that one's good. Right side primary. That's it. Control mode. That percent output. Right percent. Output. Okay, not sure what happened there, but we're good now. And so one of the reasons why I actually wanted you to get rid of the invert in the first place was to actually so that you yourself can get an intuitive feel of what direction you need to set these in. So here are some testing tips as you uh, start testing. So of course you want to set, you want to test each side independently first. So what I would recommend is grab your controller, enable the robot IntelliUp, and after, of course, don't forget to deploy your code. <laughs> but enable the robot IntelliUp and move your left joystick up. If your robot's going, if the left side is going forward, you're good. It's all set. If it's going backward, you're going to need to negate it. And then you can do the same thing with the right side and move the right stick forward. If your robot's going forward, or generally going forward rather, because again, you're only moving one side, so if it's generally going in the forward direction, you're fine. And if you move it, uh, and if it goes backward, you need to negate it. So go ahead and test this out, get the feel for what you need to negate, and hopefully this will help you understand, you know, some of the differences, some of the, or rather, some of the values of the axes, and also the reason why we actually have to invert in the first place. All right, so hopefully this helps you out in terms of testing everything, and we'll see you in the next video.